Good evening, everyone. As uh, we start to fill in here, we'll give it a minute to let our participants join and we'll get started momentarily. There we go. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bergeson Elementary and Parent Information Night. My name is Jimmy Canodal with the CUSD Communications team. I uh, just want to let you know a couple of things before we get started. There's a link on this first slide to the presentation. You can click that and follow along if you'd like. We'll also provide that along with the Q&A following the, the meeting tonight. We do have interpretation available in both Spanish and Chinese. You can click the interpretation button at the bottom of the screen and join either of those rooms. If you'd like to ask a question at any point, please enter it in the Q&A box. We will be, we'll be monitoring that and answering questions at different points throughout. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can. If we do not get to yours, we will have a complete typed out Q&A afterwards. Okay, go to the next slide, I'll introduce you to to our participants tonight. <clears throat> We're joined tonight by Greg Merwin, the Associate Superintendent for Education and Support Services, Bob Presby, the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, Marina Mack, Director 2, Office of Language Acquisition, Brad Shear, Assistant Superintendent, Elementary School Leadership and Instruction, our school principals, Greg Hauser, Jane Martin, and Judith Murphy. And I believe we're going to start off with Greg Hauser to start our presentation. Actually, Jimmy, wrong Greg. It's going to be Greg Merwin. <laughs> Greg Merwin, I apologize. Dr. Merwin, after you. No worries. It's always hard when there's two Gregs on the call. That's right. Apologies up front, everybody. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Merwin, and it is a pleasure to connect with you this evening to share more about the tra this transition, to answer your questions, and to begin this collaborative effort with all of you. So the objectives for tonight's meeting are to share the timeline for a transition for Bergeson, to explain the rationale for moving Bergeson to a Mandarin Immersion K-8 school, and to discuss plans for gathering your input and feedback beginning tonight and continuing into next year. There's always been a strong partnership between CUSD and the Bergeson school community. We're very proud of that partnership. You all will recall we worked together to overcome the challenges during the pandemic. Many of us were working together during the summer of 2020 to figure that out, and we overcame those challenges together. We're capable of anything when we work together, and we're very committed to continuing that partnership as we move forward in the future. So as Jimmy's already shared with you, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A button where you can post any questions that you may have, and then we'll pause the presentation from time to time to answer your questions. Additionally, as Jimmy shared, We'll take questions posted and put them in a general FAQ document so that that'll be sent to all staff and families next week. So if we don't get to your question tonight, or if we need to do a little additional research on your question, then please know we will respond to you and share the responses with everyone next week. Next slide, please. So we start first with providing some context to this transition and we share one of our district's three overarching goals for teaching and learning. So goal number one is it states, to engage students in meaningful, challenging, and innovative, innovative educational experiences to increase post-secondary options for all students. So then the bulleted list below goal number one includes important commitments for us moving into next year. We are committed to supporting all of our families and staff with this transition. We are committed to working collaboratively to determine our next steps for expanding and strengthening the Mandarin Immersion Program, and that includes the development of a guiding coalition with strong staff and parent involvement to explore, research, investigate, and make recommendations for the K-8 model. 
We are committed to seeking your input and listening to your feedback, concerns, and questions. And finally, we are committed to keeping you informed and updated as we move forward. Next slide. So before we go any further, I do wanna call out the elephant in the room. The news of Bergeson moving to a K-8 Mandarin immersion model starting in the fall of 24 came as a huge surprise to you. Our intent from the beginning was that we would do this work together as partners. So I wanna personally apologize that our messaging didn't emphasize this partnership. And I apologize this came out of left field without any warning. Please know that we are committed to being partners, figuring this out together and providing ongoing communication regarding our next steps. So what you see on this slide is a three-phase plan to allow for that partnership to occur. In working with your new principal, Ms. Hudith Murfeen, we're envisioning a phased approach to transitioning Bergeson to a Mandarin K-8. Phase one is supporting and transitioning our English program. Phase two is strengthening the current Mandarin program and exploring the K-8 concept. And then phase three begins the development of a K-8 model. So tonight, we will preview our initial planning on each phase with you. And then we're going to be asking for your feedback and involvement with these, with these phases. As you can see at the bottom of the slide, it's kind of cut off at the bottom there, but you can see it. These phases are gonna be informed by the input and feedback we receive from staff and the community through both surveys and the work of this guiding coalition that Principal Murphyn will be leading. So before we start to share phase one with you, I again wanna emphasize that our primary goals are to support all of our families and staff and to strengthen and expand the Mandarin Immersion Program. So while there are no changes for the English only program or the Mandarin programs for the upcoming school year, we wanna be proactive and we wanna work with all of you as we prepare for the 24-25 school year. So with that, Mr. Greg Hauser, former Principal Bergeson, is here this evening to share more about phase one. So you can go on to the next slide and thank you for being here, Greg. All right, thank you, you can kick it to the next slide. All right, hello everybody. Um, so the other Greg, so you guys know me. Uh, I am covering the history in the background for obvious reasons since I am part of the history and the background. So first of all, a shout out to all of our teachers that are with us tonight. I know uh, personally of your guys' dedication, love, um, and the work that all um, that you guys have put in for all of our students. Although I'm no longer your principal, I will always hold Bergeson in my heart. Once a bulldog, always a bulldog. Enjoyed seeing the kids up at science camp even this year. A lot of fun. Still have my uh, my science camp hoodie shirts, hoodie sweatshirts. So uh, our Mandarin Immersion Program was created when a group of community members backed by some teachers and trustees all decided to create the first Mandarin Immersion Public School in Orange County, which was a pretty, pretty uh, amazing undertaking. So Bergeson was selected because it was a declining enrollment school, and we wanted to sustain both a traditional English program and a new Mandarin program. So the traditional English program was about two or three classes, um, and then that was per grade level at the time. And however, we did notice one of the things that was the community was worried about was that uh, the traditional English program would leave since there were no other immersion programs in the district that had both programs. So we worked with the PTA and the community to try and combat that perception, but we did keep losing families every year. And that along with decline enrollment created a situation where we were down to one or less classes per grade level, um, you know, currently. And then the Mandarin Immersion Program started with one first grade class and two kindergarten classes that first year. I was not there for that. And then the CUSD staff and our community were closely together um, with like blood, sweat, and tears at times to build out our Mandarin Immersion Program one grade at a time, keeping two classes per grade level in an attempt to balance out our Mandarin and our English programs. 
Uh, we now have a K through 11 Mandarin immersion program and look forward to graduating our first class at the end of the next school year. All right, and uh, Miss Hudith Murphine had some numbers that she crunched, and I believe those are in the next slide, and she's going to review those real quick, and then I'll jump back on. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. I'm Principal Murphine. Uh, first name is Hudith. Um, I, it is a pleasure to be with you tonight. So what I did is I just wanted to look at some quick numbers and we could always look into the history of enrollment, but I wanted to look, take a look at our current numbers versus our projected numbers for next year. Um, and so just looking at our English program enrollment for this year, we have 172. We're projected to have 133, losing 39 kids, which is 23% of our English program. Mandarin 333 this year, projected to have 338. We're adding five kids, so we're growing a little bit. We, again, we'd like to continue to grow that. Overall, it looks like um, our student population, because of our English um, program, is decreasing over time. And um, I know that Mr. Dr. Merwin mentioned uh, our guiding coalition. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, but these are the types of things that we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at data, we're gonna look at patterns, but um, just listening to Greg and uh, his comments that he has been there, he's seen it, and he has seen our English program declining over the years. And these are just some hard numbers that I just wanted to kind of highlight for you. Thanks. All right, and then um, back on with, so as I mentioned earlier, this is kind of the reasoning why we were looking at transitioning the English only program. So uh, although we were trying to keep it at two and two, as, as you noticed, and as we discussed, um, it ended up now where the English program is down to only one, um, one class per grade level, sometimes even small, smaller. So although we we're trying to avoid it, and really worked hard to try and combat that. We're now looking at a need to transition the program to another school since it's not really sustainable at the current size. So there's several reasons why such a small traditional English program is not really sustainable at Ferguson and any you know school size with only one or less classes per grade level. One of those is combos. So like any small school, combination classrooms become inevitable. So while the experiences of a combination class can be very powerful when created correctly. Um, we also know that a lot of teachers and families aren't huge fans of combination classes, especially when a grade level may only have um, a combination class. So there might be a combo at both sides, which means that there's no straight class at all. So creating an effective combination class doesn't, you know, you're just not able to do. So, and all of that is based on just the size of either that grade level or sometimes the grade level above or below it, which can then pull combos at both sides. So. Um, collaboration is also one of our district's major priorities and is a commitment um, where our teachers are working together in collaboration as a professional learning community, uh, learning together through action research to ensure high outcomes for our students. We ask teachers to regularly get together two to three times weekly to collaborate and share best practices in regards to lessons they're teaching, the results they're seeing, how we can improve on those results, um, again, Ferguson teachers have been doing amazingly well in spite of the challenges um, that come from trying to collaborate with two separate programs and with, you know, two of them being a Mandarin teacher and only one being an English only program, um, which then leads to, you know, even more of a need for, you know, the possibility of having teachers in an English only program being able to just have more people to collaborate with that are teaching the same things they are. And then also with uh, such a small traditional English program, the immersion program and culture starts to dominate the school instead of enhancing it. So I know before um, we were always, we were one school. We had a structured autism program when I first started too, before the pandemic hit. And just the things we were able to do with all of those programs and, and working together were truly amazing. And I think benefited all of the students. But when, you know, one, one program starts to dominate the other, it just becomes a challenge where instead of enhancing it, it ends up hindering that program instead. And that was... Absolutely, Greg, and I'm just going to jump in and just reiterate um, our commitment to our professional learning community 
process for all of our teachers. And as Greg mentioned, it is um, as important it's important for all of our teachers and it's important for our um, English program teachers. Uh, right now, there are only um, one, there's only one teacher per grade level. And, um, and so it's, it's, they're doing a phenomenal job. They are absolutely doing a great job, great teaching going on, great learning going on. Um, and we just want to continue to support them and having teachers um, that teach the same grade level, um, more colleagues to collaborate with um, is is just a much better practice, which is our intent to um, try to provide them with more support, just like providing more support work for our Mandarin immersion um, teachers as well. And if you could click on the next slide. Um, the other commitment is to align our language immersion program to the other language immersion programs um, in our district. We recently received the Golden Bell Award district-wide K-12 for our language immersion program, both in Mandarin and in Spanish. And we are so proud of the work that our students and our teachers have done. So these are the schools in our district that, that are currently language immersion only or a one program school and uh, the cities that they're in. So um, the, the idea again is that we align our Mandarin immersion program in the same manner as we have aligned the rest of our language immersion schools. Um, and this is part of our phase one approach to um, our uh, transition um, program. So if I could have you click to the next one, please. Thank you. And so the transition for our English program are options. And I want you to kind of take a look at these options as large umbrellas. So originally the, uh, or the options that have been set is to sunset one class per year. So again, this is a big umbrella. So parents um, who have children in the English program could apply for a school of choice at an elementary school within our district. The school of choice window opens up um, between February and March. And in this PowerPoint is a link to the school of choice webpage and um, we'll make this PowerPoint available to you. That's one option within the umbrella of sunsetting one class per year. To transition to the Laguna Niguel Elementary School, which is for um, Bergeson would be the natural flow of students to go to, but again, options are there for families, or for students and families to remain enrolled at Bergeson through fifth grade. But the first and, and foremost, the most important thing is to hear from you. We want to hear from our English families, English program families. What is it that you want to do based on the information that we're providing to you? And in this PowerPoint is also a link to a survey. The other large umbrella of options that in our preliminary conversations with families and with teachers is the possibility of transitioning um, families to um, attend Laguna Niguel as a group, right? Or as many students to attend schools in groups. Um, part of it is of course the social aspect, part of it is the teachers know the kids and it's easier to possibly, possibly, right? Because these are the things we're gonna explore, move them in large groups rather than one grade level at a time. But those are the things that we are going to explore, but we wanna hear from our families. What do you think would be the best thing for you and your family at this time? So if you click to the next um, slide, I want you to take a look at the original proposed sunsetting of one class per year. And if you look at this graph, it shows you again next year, everything is status quo. All of our programs will stay the same. Kindergarten um, will, will stay where it's at. Um, this is the last year of kinder of our English program at Bergeson. And then the following year, 24-25, it would be first through fifth. And then the year after, second through fifth, year after that, third through fifth, year after that, fourth through fifth. And it won't be until 2028, 2029 that we'll have the last class of fifth graders if we transition one class per year. Um, but that is an option under the sunsetting umbrella that we talked about per year. Next slide. 
And so now, since we just talked about only the English program at this time, um, we would like to open it up. Uh, and I know some of you have been writing some questions. So we'd like to open it up for questions that are specifically related to our English program, because after we are done with this one, we're going to go into the transition of our Mandarin immersion program. Jimmy, are there any questions that um, the panel needs to answer related to our English program transition? Any questions pertaining to this program? I'm sorry, you got uh, cut off a little bit there. Go ahead. I think Jimmy's frozen. I think that's our problem right now. So let's look. I think we can start. Uh, we can start jumping in and answer some of these as we oh, open sir. up the Q and A. Uh, do you not have any questions? So I'll I'll jump in and say too. I want to um, address one question about. Why, just in general, why are we in a virtual only meeting? And I do want to mention that we're doing this so that more families can access this information so that we can provide translation in both Chinese and Spanish, and that this can be recorded and shared out afterwards, and that we have a record of questions and that you can clearly hear the presentation and, and see the presentation as opposed to if we were in person. So please know too, and Ms. Murphy uh, will commit to this, that this is not the one and done and this is it. And this is the last time you're going to be meeting and getting questions answered. This is our initial opportunity to connect with all of you. And then we will absolutely have face-to-face -face options in the future. But we all really, this was to provide better access for more families to be able to attend this meeting. So I just wanted to Put that out in front in case you're wondering why is it virtual and not face to face. So, uh, as we look at the questions, then everybody, are there any that are specific to English only that uh, you're noticing that anybody can jump in and answer? Um, yeah. So, Dr. Marin, as Brad here, so Assistant Superintendent. Um, yeah, I'm noticing a few that are specifically about the English program. One question was about uh, what does sunsetting the program mean for RH Dana Elementary? Um, and what we mean by that is they phased out um, their English program one grade level at a time. Um, and so right now their, uh, their Spanish immersion program is in grades K through three. And this year their fourth and fifth grades were English only. Next year it will be K through four for the uh, Spanish immersion program and grade five will be their English only program. And then one more year after that, though the entire school will be uh, all Spanish immersion. So they did follow a one year at a time sunsetting uh, process. Uh, another question was all the other language immersion schools, Spanish, are they K-8? So the answer is no. Um, there's just, they're all K-5 or TK-5 at this point in time. Um, mm -hmm. One of yeah, the other English questions yeah, was how do you anticipate class sizes changing as you phase out the English program and expand to K-8 for Mandarin immersion? And that's one of the things I know um, Ms. Murphine had shared that she's going to work closely with those families on the best way to do that, depending on how the classes do change or things like that. Okay. There is another question about uh, school of choice. So one participant said they had a school of choice to get into Bergeson. Um, and do they have a school of choice again to go to Laguna Niguel? Um, so that's a good question. Um, Dr. Merwin, do you have an initial thought on that answer? Uh, we'll have to, we will provide the actual uh, details as far as the process so that that'll be very clear in the fall. So there's plenty of time before the school choice window comes next February. Um, so we'll make sure that that's um, clearly spelled out in the fall. So you have um, several months in advance. Uh, of course, any time the school of choice window 
opens, then any family can then school of choice to any school that's open. So that's always going to be an option for families uh, at any school during our school choice window. And it would be true for our Bergson families as well. Uh, but we'll make sure that we have that as one of our specific follow-ups. What process, you know, would you automatically be going into Laguna Niguel uh, if you didn't have a, you know, unless you had a different choice, for example, would you have to do anything, any process? We'll, we'll make sure that's clear in the fall so that everybody understands. Another question is, is AVMS still the default school for middle school? So my understanding is we're not changing any middle school boundaries. So middle school boundaries would stay the same depending on where you are, uh, your home is located. Uh, do you agree, Dr. Ron? Yes. Okay. There's a question about whether there be more combo classes during the transition. Um, I think that depends on the number of, of students in the English only program. So it'll always be the commitment to avoid combos whenever possible, but depending on the, the number of students enrolled, that will that'll dictate the number of combos. So it's possible there could be more combo classes. Uh, there's a question about transportation. So what if someone has transportation difficulties? We will definitely in the fall uh, talk about transportation options. We're happy to explore that uh, to see if anything is, um, you know, to see what options there are for families. So that would be something we would follow up in the fall. Uh, another question was, since School of Choice is closed uh, for this upcoming year, can we request to be assigned somewhere else still for next year? And I believe as we said in the presentation, we're, we are closed for this year. Um, the school choice conversations we're talking about would be for the following year in 24, 25. Anything else you'd add to that, Dr. Moran? If you, uh, the, the only other option, if a family is interested in going to another school is through something called administrative placement. That is described on the website uh, for school choice website on our district. Uh, so it, there's a specific process per our board policy so if you had interest in learning about that, then I would recommend you talk to interim principal um, Jane Martin or incoming principal Hudith Murfin uh, regarding that. But there, but school of choice is closed for um, for the upcoming school year. But it would, of course, then be available for 24-25. And then I, I just want to add that admin placement has a specific criteria that you need to meet. Um, and closing a school uh, or closing a program um, is not one of those criteria. So we can definitely have a conversation about it. Um, is it okay just because of our time that we have, we still have phase two <laughs> and phase three, and maybe we could add more questions to the end. Are you are you okay with that, Dr. Merwin? Okay. Yeah, let's and we're capturing all of these. We have we we will have a copy of all of these questions. We'll make sure that we are putting them obviously in the frequently asked questions document. It'll be available next week. Thank you. If we could go on to the next slide, please. And we are on phase two. Thank you so much. So phase two is um, looking at all of the great things that are already happening at Bergeson, right? I'm coming in, I know Newhart, I know some of the families, I know how our Mandarin program works from the middle school perspective, but I um, need to learn Bergeson, but not just the, the, the Mandarin program, I need to learn our English only program, I need to learn our staff, facilities, everything that there is. I am not the Mandarin immersion principal. I am the Bergeson Elementary School principal, and that is how I'm coming in. And I want to hear from all of my parents, all of my teachers, all of my students. So my goal in phase two is to strengthen um, and build it on the successes that the school has, looking at all of the traditions and the best practices that are happening and focusing on teaching and learning and building those relationships with support from you, the community. I know for a fact that the Bergeson community loves to be involved in the decision-making process, which was part of our conversation with Dr. Merwin, with, uh, with Mr. Scherer, with um, Jane, with Mr. Hauser, with Rowan, with Dr. Mack, 
all of us got together and we said, you know what, we need to slow down. We need to take a step back to take two forward because this community really needs to come together. I want to listen to what they have to say. They're they're caring parents who give a lot of their time, effort, and energy and resources to our kids. I am that kind of person and I want to work hand in hand with them. And I know, I know our district does too. I wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. So build what we have. Um, we are a um, Golden Bell award-winning program in our district. Let's capitalize on that and let's strengthen that and see what else we can do to create our, um, our program so that it is a world-class program so that we can make a very unique program in this part of the county and draw folks from everywhere to come here. So we will have the support from the communications department to promote, to advertise, to recruit. We are going to strengthen and articulate our curriculum. We're going to refine our instructional practices and our assessment practices. I've been um, at New Heart for four years, and I've been involved heavily with our Mandarin program, instruction and curriculum. And I, I'm just here as a resource to continue to help expand this amazing program that is super unique to our district. We have the support from the language um, from the Office of Language Acquisition. Dr. Rowena Mack is here 120% here to support us in whatever it is that we need. And on top of all of these great intentions, we have research to explore and questions to consider and all of us to meet and ponder on all of the things that we are talking about right now in the 28 questions that are currently in the Q&A, I would like to invite, and I would like to invite a combination of parents, teachers, staff, community members, and students, if they are willing to, and it would probably be our fifth graders, if not, maybe some of our older kids can as well, to come up with, to be part of our guiding coalition. And what we do, what we will do in this guiding coalition is explore all of these questions and dilemmas and possible um, roadblocks um, and uh, concerns that we have and go out there and find out those answers and come up with our findings and recommendations that I know that our district is more than happy to listen to and um, consider. Um, we will take your survey, uh, we'll do a survey now, we're going to do a survey in the fall, we're going to do a survey in the middle of the year, we're going to do a survey at the end of the year. Um, there will be a lot of constant communication, and if you guys know me, and I know some of you guys do, I am relentless in finding out answers to the questions that we need to support our children and our staff, and to continue to strengthen our schools. That's my goal, that's what I've always done everywhere in the district, and I've been in the district over 25 years, so close to 30. Um, so if you, um, Brad, if you click to the next one, in addition to our guiding coalition, Rowan is going to talk a little bit about the um, program evaluation that our entire language immersion program is going to go through this coming year. Right, Rowena? Correct. So as part of our uh, professional learning communities work with all of our language immersion sites, one of the elements that the entire program would like to really leverage is what are our current strengths. And so part of that will be actually working with um, Cal Solutions. Cal Solutions starts, uh, stands for Center for Applied Linguistics, and they are the governing body that really even publishes the guiding principles of dual language immersion and immersion and provides us with a lot of expertise in terms of just language immersion program evaluation. That will happen for the 23-24 school year where we actually are gonna be starting that work now, this May, um, this Thursday, as a matter of fact, and Friday, where we have invited teachers from, uh, teacher leaders from both of our um, TWI Spanish as well as our Mandarin Immersion Program to provide us some input on the types of questions and elements of our program that that they value, that they would like to study, and that would really give us a good indication of the effectiveness of our program. Based on that, then one of the things that we are looking into is partnering with an outside consultant that's not necessarily Cal Solutions, but capitalizing in the results of that program evaluation and examining more in depth 
what those uh, takeaways are with respect to the context of that within our Mandarin immersion program. So I know one of the questions that came up already in the question and is the specific name of that outside consultant. And we do not have that specific name determined or decided because those are precisely the types of things that we would like to work on with the guiding coalition is um, to provide us some input and feedback on the type of expertise that we're looking for and the type of questions that we wanna further examine to really provide us with that study and examination of our effectiveness of our Mandarin immersion program and where we continue to grow and build upon. Perfect, thank you, Rowena. Um, before we go on to phase three, are there any questions, Jimmy, that you want us to answer? Can you guys hear me right now? Yes. Awesome. Um, a couple questions about the K-8 model and how specifically how that works with PLCs. I think maybe uh, Greg Hauser, do you want to share a little bit about what that looks like at a K-8? Am I unmuted? <laughs> All right. Um, so I know that like a smaller school, like right now I'm at a large K-8. I'm pretty familiar with K-8s because at Carl Hinke, I um, created as an assistant principal a very smaller K-8. So although there's you know challenges that go along with creating any program, as we, we know when we were doing the Mandarin Immersion Program, um, it, it looks very similar to a traditional middle school. It's just smaller, kids stay a little bit younger. And then obviously there's going to be, um, you know, especially at the beginning, some, you know, less elective choices, things like that. The school I'm currently at is, is expanding out its electives because we're currently a small middle school and growing out a little bit. And when we're at Hanky, we, you know, just did the same thing. But you still have PE every day. You still go to an electives class every day. You still switch classes from teacher to teacher. You know, it's it's not just, you know, a, a bigger elementary school, that type of thing. So a lot of the same opportunities are there. And, you know, one of the reasons that that I actually went to Ascensi is because how much I, I do enjoy the K-8 model. And it did enjoy building, you know, Hanky to be that. And at the time I was you know, assistant principal and couldn't pass out the opportunity to come to Bergson as a principal, but he said, I did enjoy that. So, I mean, I can all help be part of the team for Ms. Murphy and stuff too, as if she has any questions um, and, and work towards that as well and, and can help answer any of the questions that parents put in the chat and stuff too. But it is, you know, although it's a very unique experience, it is, it is a middle school experience and the students will um, be able to create a lot of, of bonds and things like that. I actually did my master's thesis on the academic and um, and social emotional differences between a, a six eight and a and a K eight. So I had a lot of stuff going into that too. So like I said, always happy to be a resource. Thank you, Greg. And um, towards the end, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the research, um, which there's plenty of. But one of the things, just to answer, I, I obviously have not been at a K-8, but I'm always willing to learn. Um, a, an element of our PLC is to um, create common, common everything, right? Common assessments um, and, to, and to provide a guaranteed and viable um, curriculum for our students, which means that um, kinder knows what first grade's doing, first grade knows what second is doing, and so on and so on and so forth, right? So, so that there isn't a gap between fifth grade and sixth grade, um, and that there's a smooth flow from kids getting ready from one grade level to the next, and we're building on those skills. Um, and so the part of the PLC work is to align our practices and develop consistency, both in our curriculum and our instructional practices and our assessments. And um, just in a nutshell, that's some of the work that we do through our PLC process. So when we have a K-8, we can do it across all the spans of grades um, and we can take a standard and we could do um, a variety of different types of instruction that allows kids to 
really understand and comprehend concepts because um, mathematics, as we know, is becoming more conceptual than rote. Um, so it just allows for um, that much more work with teachers. And right now, as we know, any time that our elementary school teachers and our middle school teachers need to meet, we need to pull them out of the classroom to do that. So um, that is just one of the elements that um, makes it uh, for a great K-8. But certainly, as Greg mentioned as well, we do see um, less disciplinary issues. We see higher academics with students and less um, or less uh, social emotional uh, distress among our, our, our kids in a K-8 model. Um, so those are things that are definitely out there in the research that we're going to cover in a little bit. Um, I know that was a very long answer to one question. Sorry, Jimmy. Anything else? Yeah, we had a couple about um, extracurricular activities. Um, will those be offered at Mand or at and how will those be transitioned? Yes, I love that you're asking these questions because um, I don't know. That just gives me hope that we're going to definitely work together to make this happen. Um, I would. I'm. I'm all about developing and bringing together resources to um, to make our kids day during the school day and day after school uh, an exciting and engaging opportunity, right? So for example, at New Heart, we have eSports and that was a concept that we started with one of my teachers and it's, it's really about what are our needs, right? And that's what our guiding coalition is gonna do. We're gonna figure out what are our needs and then how do we fill those needs? Our teachers are at the cornerstone of what we do and our staff is as well, right? And then we, we do want to partner up with community partners when our teachers are not able to or cannot for whatever reason support us in that respect. So there are plenty of partners in the STEAM uh, um, community that want to partner with us and come out to our schools to support our kids. What classes, what kind of courses will that look like? That is what I want to hear from our teachers, our parents, and our students so that we can build a program. And, and I think that if I could just throw my little side pitch is that, and, and now frame it in, we will listen to whatever you guys want, right? We will work together as partners. We will move forward together. But we have an opportunity to create something that is going to be very unique to our kids and to our needs and to our community. What will that look like? Let's work together to make that happen, right? And if we, I was talking to one of the parents and, it, and it's like, you know, you come to New Heart, okay? And you compete with everybody else for a zero period class. So you can have two electives because one of your electives is taken up by your language. By your language class. So if you're if you're lucky to have one of those 60 seats in zero period, along with everybody else, then you might have another elective class. But how cool would it be? And Greg, you're not listening to this to have a seven period day where every single kid has two electives, period. And the, there's no competition. There's no waiting list. So I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I, I, I appreciate that you're thinking about all of that creative way of creating something that would be really exciting for our kids. Now, is it going to be tough? Are we going to have difficulty? Is it going to not be a smooth ride? Yeah, but working together, we can make it happen because I've seen it. I've seen the work that our families do, which is part of the reason why I'm so excited and committed to the work at Bergeson because there are there is there is so much that we can do together. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to get off my high horse and then I'm going to go on with a presentation because I know there is a lot for us to cover. And this is just the beginning of many, many more uh, opportunities for us to sit down and talk together about this. So if you can click to the next slide, phase three. Again, we're going to expand the Mandarin Immersion Program because it is a great program, right? So somebody had asked, well, why, why is it the Spanish immersion schools? Why aren't they a K-8? I don't know. Why aren't they? Well, I can tell you one thing. I was a teacher at um, Marco Forster Middle School for 13 years, assistant principal. 
um, San Juan Elementary fed into us. We were a dual immersion school. Well, San Juan and there are other schools that feed into San Juan Elementary. So, or I'm sorry, San Juan feeds into other middle schools. So they, it's hard to just make one, right? It's just hard to make one K-8. But hey, maybe we'll be the people, you know, in the out there in the front um, showing everyone how this is possible because it is such a great program. But I can't do this. I can't do this building or possibly looking into this without your support. I need my guiding coalition, my instructional leadership, which is comprised of all of my teachers, partnership with PTA, Friends of MIP. You are the ones that are going to help me help shape our school because it is our school. We're going to report our findings and our recommendations. We're going to look at K-8 research. We're going to do needs assessments and surveys. We're going to analyze data, various data points, Daniel Wong. Yes, various data points. We're going to get community input. Then we're going to report back to our community and it's going to be as transparent as we can be. And something that Dr. Merwin and everyone has said to me, and trust me, I don't know if you know me, but I love New Heart, right? I love New Heart. My heart has been at New Heart for four years. We went through a lot here. I know I'm going to fall in love with Bergeson, and I would not live leave New Heart if I did not strongly believe that we can make something really, truly unique happen with Bergeson and with our Mandarin program. I truly believe that we can. And with the support from our district, which I believe we have from various departments, we can make all of this happen together as a team. So if you click on the next one for me. So the original plan was to expand it one grade level at a time, right? Next year, 23-24, everything is going to stay the same. The current fifth graders will attend New Heart next year. So they will finish New Heart. They will start with sixth grade, go on to seventh, go on to eighth at New Heart. They will not be able to transfer anywhere, okay? Because no one's, we're not doing anything next year at, at Bergeson other than everything stays the same. And we just explore and learn and really get our goal, uh, our guiding coalition together. So our first students who are going to remain at Bergeson, again, original plan would be the current fourth graders who will be our sixth graders back in 2024-25. OK, but our timeline is subject to change depending on family input, survey results and the findings and recommendations from our guiding coalition. And if you click on the next one, I have a graphic for you because I'm a visual learner. I like to hear it. I like to talk about it, I like to see it. But visuals are my thing. So if you look at the graph on the left hand side, you saw the first one where it had the years and and the grades and in, in, um, for our English program. So if we do a year by year, this is what it's going to look like in um, for our Mandarin and our English program on the left hand side. The one on the right shows you what I just said, where we're going to be at next year. So this is the fifth grade class, the fourth grade group currently in the third grade class. Right. So just I just used three just so you could see them. So the fifth graders are going to come to New Heart in sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. Then they're going to go to Kappa Valley in 26, 27. Then it's not until 24, 25, according to the original proposed option, that our Bergeson students would stay in Bergeson and then would not go to Kappa until 27, 28, and then third grade. So that's this is just an illustration of kind of how that would go. Now, depending on the information we gathered, surveys, all of that stuff, this timeline might change, but I wanted you to see because this information was put out that it's going to happen. It's going to happen 24, 25. I want you to see what that would look like in the event that that happens. In the event, event it doesn't, then all of these timelines, of course, will go ahead and change. But I wanted you to see what that would look like. And then if you click on the next one, Dr. Merwin is going to present to you some preliminary considerations and research for the Mandarin K-8 program, not only because it is going to be a unique program for our kids and for our district, but because the research also shows that. And if you click on the next one for Dr. Merwin, please. Thanks so much, Hudith. 
And uh, so as Principal um, Rafine shared earlier, so our number one goal is to strengthen, enhance, and grow the Mandarin immersion into a world-class program. That's our goal. This is where the concept of the K-8 came from, to offer a unique Mandarin immersion experience that's not offered anywhere else in Orange County. And this would attract significant attention and interest. So I've been monitoring the Q&A and I've been jumping in, jumping in and answering several of them, but I keep seeing over and over, well, why, are, why the K-8? Why are you considering the K-8? What is the rationale? This is the rationale. There is no competition for a public school K-8 Mandarin model. Zero competition in the entire county. So that would make this, so we build on the, on the fact that this is a Golden Bell winning program, build it out into this unique K-8 experience. And that's why uh, we believe it will allow the program to grow in exponentially and take it to the next level. And so then, okay, well, why, why Bergeson? Why are you picking on Bergeson? Well, so as you can see here, actually, the K-8 model, there is there's kind of a groundswell movement, not just in Capistrano, but, but across the state and across the country to consider K-8s whenever possible. So as you can see, there are quite a few K-8s already in our district. Uh, Royo Vista and Carl Hankey have been K-8s for many years. Essencia K-8, as Mr. Hauser knows, has been phasing in grade level by grade level and is now a uh, fully operating K-8 program. Vista Del Mar uh, began last year transitioning to K-8. Las Flores is transitioned to a K-8 next year. And then new construction going on in Rancho Mission Viejo is in a K-8. That'll be called Rienda. We don't have an opening date yet, but because the model is, so, is, is such an effective model for students, new schools are being built intentionally to be K-8 models. So if you could go to the next slide, please. Okay, so then as many of you have been saying, so why then, why are we doing this to the Mandarin program? What's the value? So we're proposing this because the research supports it. Our team has done significant research in this area on the K-8 model, and we have found many studies that support the K-8 concept over the traditional middle school model because of positive outcomes for students and many other benefits. So as you see on this slide, first and foremost, students feel more connected to adults and peers, which is particularly important during their adolescent years. We all know middle school is a difficult time for our students. I have a middle schooler myself. I know as a parent what that's like, all the things that they're, that they're addressing as they're moving into a middle school experience. The K-8 model provides them with additional feeling of connectedness and support, which supports their mental health, and that results in better student outcomes and academics. The K-8 experience also results in a decrease in student discipline and an increase in parental involvement. So as we've seen, and so many of you who have, who have students that have already matriculated in the middle school, less and less parental involvement happens every year as you get into the middle school levels. The K-8 continues to value and encourage, and you continue to have that parental involvement because families have that ownership starting in kindergarten all the way through eighth grade in that school. And the fact that discipline is decreased in a K-8 model versus a middle school model is significant for our students. This is beneficial for our students, and that's why we want that we want to consider and propose this K-8 model for the Mandarin Immersion Program. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So, but we know that, uh, you know, we know many of you and we appreciate your passion and your involvement. We would know that you would want to see the studies yourself. So we are providing links in the PowerPoint uh, this evening for all of you. You are welcome to read the articles. We actually have additional articles that we have found that we will be sharing with Ms. Murphine and she can then share it on with the Guiding Coalition and any family that wants to read the articles. Interestingly enough, we also wanted to go out and do our due diligence and find studies that actually recommended a traditional middle school over a K-8 model. And guess what? There was zero studies that we found that actually recommended a middle school model over a K-8 model for our middle school age students. Zero studies. That being said, 
We want to support the Guiding Coalition with, uh, with your work. We will continue to do research on our own and share it with the Guiding Coalition so you have all the information available for you. But the K-8 model is good for kids. That is the bottom line. So if you could turn, go to the next slide, please. And so now I'm going to bring up, I'm going to address the other elephant in the room. And I've seen that elephant roaming around in the Q&A. That question, the question that keeps coming up over and over, and that's about facilities. So we know interim principal Jane Martin, principal Murphine, and our staff, we've heard from you regarding concerns and questions regarding the facilities on the Bergeson campus and how that could impact this K-8 model. So we all know there's no magic potion for that, right, to immediately fix the issues. But let me just share a couple of concepts with you and next steps so that you're fully aware, since we want to make sure that we address this. So first, as it states in that first bullet, Ms. Murphine has heard very clearly from both uh, Ms. Martin and from all of you directly that facilities needs is a major priority. And so she will make it that priority and she will begin working prior even to the end of this school year to address the immediate facility needs with our district's maintenance and operations department. So that's a great thing about Ms. Murphine already having a head start on this and she can start to work right away with our maintenance and operations uh, department. Secondly, we wanted you to be aware of a district-wide study of all of our elementary schools that began this past fall that includes Bergeson. This is known as the District Advisory Committee, also uh, described as a DAC. And what this group is doing is they're analyzing all the elementary schools and considering the educational programmatic needs and the site capacity and the facility issues and will ultimately make recommendations to the board. As it states on this slide, the DAC is aware of the current needs, the current needs of the Mandarin program, and they will also be aware of the future needs of a K-8 for the Mandarin program, and this will be included in their study, and this will be addressed in their recommendations to our trustees. So the DAC has been paused, as it states, until a new superintendent is hired, which we expect to happen uh, next month, and then just for the new superintendent to start it this summer, and then this work will resume. And once it does, then we will work with Principal Murphine so to make sure you are updated on the DAC study and that their recommendations and the subsequent board direction are shared with the guiding coalition. So you're fully aware of those potential impacts on facilities. Finally, this question has also been coming up. We've been seeing many times in the Q&A. The questions regarding a smaller K-8 and how does that look different from a comprehensive middle school? So as Ms. Murphy has already shared, Part of the work of the guiding coalition is discuss this and that you know that other k-8s that are smaller and have specialized programs that you study those that you look at those smaller k-8 specialized programs because right here in our own backyard we have carl hankey k-8 that has a successful international baccalaureate program as a small k-8 so that's one place to study there are other programs to study and really learn from it so you can you can uh, address the issues of that smaller school K as a, as a coalition and make those recommendations. So next slide, please. So I just want to re reiterate again, as I stated earlier, we are committed to answering your questions, gathering your feedback, and working together. As we set up in the, in, in the beginning of tonight, we may not get to all of your questions. We are answering them as we've been going. We'll answer a few, we'll answer some more now. There are some we'll have to get back to you because we'll need to do some additional research, but we will be providing a frequently asked question document that will be provided to all staff and families next week to be able to make sure that you know that you've been heard and we address your questions and we encourage you to be involved to, to continue to work closely with Ms. Murphine uh, moving forward. And we're very excited about this work. So. Thank you. We're going to wrap up with that and go into some questions. We appreciate you being here this evening with us. Ms. Murphine, anything you wanted to say to close on this slide? Um, just reiterating that um, we'll try to answer a few more questions and then we'll go ahead and create a, a, an FAQ um, and then get that out to families um, within a week's time. Um, we want to make sure that we give you some thoughtful responses. 
And um, I just want to appreciate um, all of the families that are here tonight. I know that you have taken time away from your family. One of the big reasons why I asked if we could please do this via Zoom is because I know many families also don't live in the area. Some of our teachers don't live in the area. And then we also have families that are not in Bergeson or New Hart um, that are some of our inaugural families that um, I believe are also um, joining us tonight. So I thank you also. I know you have invested a lot of time, energy, um, sweat and tears and love for this program. And um, I completely and 100% understand that. And I wanted to do, I want to do what it takes to ensure that this program keeps on going. And um, I just want to say that uh, we don't have the answers to everything that is going to happen um, because we want to create a plan together um, with uh, you in mind, with our kids in mind, with our community in mind. Um, and I think that those are the best plans when we come together and it feels that the community has had their input um, through and through from the beginning, um, which is why I I appreciate Dr. Merwin and the rest of the team really listening um, when we sat down and we said we need to really stop for a moment and um, really consider all voices, all perspectives, and really gather information before um, we really solidify any any plan of any sort. So I just want to thank you all. Um, and I and as I said, this is only the beginning. This is only one um, meeting. We will have many more meetings. Someone asked about the guiding coalition and when that will take place. I will gather your information through the survey. One of the questions is if you want to be part of it, we need to have an equal balance of community members, parents, teachers, staff, and I would love to have students be part of it as well. And then I will be reaching out um, over the summer um, if I can do it before I leave. I'm here through the middle of June and, come, and I come back mid-July. And I take only but a few weeks off um, because I'm excited to come back and start the work with you. Um, I will continue to work with Mrs. Martin. Um, she has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, she is an incredible principal that has been in our district for many years, very well respected. And she is just setting the foundation for me to come in and continue my work. So I am incredibly thankful for the work that she has done. I will be at Bergeson on the 18th um, after I think 1230 meeting staff. I've been there a couple a couple of times and I will continue to be there between now and the end of the school year. And then I don't know if you if you want to answer any more a couple more questions or if you want to put the rest of it in our QA. FAQ. <laughs> We had some questions on next steps. I think those were addressed well. Great. What are uh, any plans or anything you can say about um, the the K through eight accelerated math and English? The K through eight accelerated math and English. Supporting those like Newhart currently does and will. Um. Well, you know that will be. Absolutely, that will be part of part of our plan. Um, how many kids are in math accelerated, in, uh, social science accelerated, um, English accelerated? I mean, that is all part of the student population that we end up with, right? At one point, someone had asked, and I don't know if it was in these questions or other questions, about our special education programs. If those are the services that our students need, those are the services that our students need. Um, as Greg Hauser mentioned, it looks different at, uh, at K-8 just because of the nature of the school. Um, but if those are the services that our students need, then those are the services that our students need. So it's just a matter of um, how you make your schedule work. Um, and then once you um, build it up, 
then it, it really, it really takes off. So for example, sorry, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. So right now we're looking at our kinder classes, right? And we're looking at, gosh, you know, we really could start expanding some of our kinder classes, our first grade classes. Let's start, let's start doing that work. So um, we've already had conversations about that. We said, let, we can do three kindergarten classes. Let's do it. Let's start recruitment. Um, Jimmy, who's on the line right now, is going to help us do that um, with our families. Um, that is how we're going to build our program is starting to get more families to come to our program, obviously. And we need to do that now. We can't wait until next year. We can't wait until we make decisions. We want to continue to build the program, period. Right. That is our number one goal and strengthen their, our program. So we will have three kindergarten classes and we're working toward increasing that student population, which as you know, is gonna continue to, to move on and move forward. Um, we're gonna work on recruitment and retention and um, deal with any attrition and any issues that happen along the way. Um, many of those issues are questions that we've discussed over the past four years with, um, the Mandarin Immersion K-12 articulation team that I've been meeting with. We have a meeting, as a matter of fact, on the 22nd or 23rd of this month, um, where we talk about K-12 articulation and what are the things that we need to take a look at. So now that team, I will be learning from the K-5 perspective and then strengthening, strengthening middle school. And then I'll be working closely with the high school as well to make sure that we're all on the same page. Let me, uh, let me jump into and just share a couple of things. So um, we already, you know, knowing that we want to really uh, do a blitz campaign on um, increasing enrollments, uh, Jimmy, part of the communications team, and Ryan Burris have already put, um, they're putting information on the front page of the website so that we can start to attract more attention. It's uh, specific to the Manver program. So we'll, that's just the first step of really getting out there and getting out to the community to attract more enrollments. Uh, I also want to mention too, some questions have come up about, well, what would be, you know, what would be provided for that experience for our middle school grades at the K-8? So I just wanted to share too that, you know, we have an outstanding college career advantage program, the CCA, and they have um, facilities and rooms at Newhart right now I've already talked to their executive director and said, hey, in the future with the K-8 at Bergeson, we want to be able to bring those kind of great pathways and options to uh, the, the Mandarin K-8 program. And so already there's work underway to say, okay, great, we could bring this, we could bring that. We want to make sure kids would have those pathways into high school, just like they would at Newhart. So that that's exciting work that that we recognize in many of your questions, kind of like, well, how about this and how about that? And how would we make that a great middle school experience? That's how we do it. And the other thing too, is that, as I mentioned before, there are other specialized program K-8 models that are very successful that provide students with outstanding opportunities. In our own district, Carl Hankey does that for the International Baccalaureate Program. So we're obviously going to work closely with them to see what uh, what the formula is and how they're able to bring these great experiences to their students with a smaller school, with a, with a, a smaller student population. Uh, how do you bring those experiences to them? So, so just know that's part of the work of the coalition and just our, our commitment as a district uh, team is to be there to support Ms. Murphine and to be, you know, to be at those meetings, to be present, to give you the support you need to, to help define our next steps. And I'm seeing that uh, I must not being a do, being a do, doing a good job of answering things because there are actually more questions coming in than we can answer them. So we, are, we obviously are not going to be able to get to all of the questions tonight. Uh, we will have these answered in an FAQ uh, for you by uh, next week. So please know, I'm sorry if it's frustrating. I'm like, why aren't you answering my question? Well, we're, we're doing our best, but there are a lot of questions coming in and we'll we'll make sure we get those in the FAQ. So any other um, final thoughts, Principal Morphine or anyone else uh, that you wanted to answer or share before we wrap up? 
No, thank you. Thank you so much. And I appreciate, again, all the questions tonight. We're getting some really great questions. We'll make sure that those are um, addressed. And uh, yes, we this is not going to be the only format that we have parent meetings in. This was just the first one. We wanted to engage as many families as possible, record it, let you see clear information. Uh, and then we are absolutely committed to providing follow-up meetings where you can have a chance to have some back and forth conversation. This is just our first opportunity to get the information to you, hear your initial questions, and then uh, put those out in an FAQ document. So with that, anybody else have any other final thoughts? Or we'll go ahead and wrap up and we'll collect all of these questions. Jimmy, do you can you make sure that you um, download and collect all the questions from tonight? I see Jimmy. Yes, we'll have everything taken care of. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, so with that, then I just want to again I appreciate all of you. You're you have very, very busy lives. We appreciate you being here this evening. I also want to appreciate um, uh, Mr. Hauser coming. Thank you, Ms. Murphine, for being here, Dr. Mack, uh, Mr. Shearer, and also from HRS. Uh, we had uh, Dr. Presby here. He has also been in the room this evening, listening in and looking at all the questions so that we'll be able to understand it from a staffing position as well. So we'll get all this information out to you. And we look forward then to scheduling follow-up meetings, getting the Gui Guiding Coalition formed by Ms. Murphine. So stay tuned and be watching for all of that from Ms. Martin and Ms. Murphine for next steps. So with that, everyone, thank you for uh, being here this evening. We look forward to connecting with you again. Thank you for your time. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.